In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you know our very thoughts before we think them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are good and forgiving. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you do wondrous deeds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show that you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. In those who know you, you revoke tremorsity. But though you are a master of might, you judge with clemency and with much leniency you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you've taught your people by these deeds that those that are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance of their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is, Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. 
Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, Lord you, you are, are good, good and, and forgiving. forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, Lord you, you are good, good and, and forgiving. forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give strength to your servant. Lord, Lord you, are you are good, good and, and forgiving. forgiving. The second reading, a letter, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with in inexpressible groanings and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the spirit because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will the word of the Lord thanks be to God Almighty God, be on your lips and in your heart. You proclaim us holy gospel, worldly and well. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not grow good, sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Good morning. I have to tell you, it's kind of strange giving a homily to people wearing masks. It's hard to see uh, your reactions to anything. 
At any rate, our gospel reading last week included Jesus' parable of the sower. And in his parable, Jesus explained the different ways that people accept or reject the word of God. Now today's parable also uses the images of seed, wheat, and weeds. But today, they're used to teach us about the existence of good and evil. Now many Bible scholars believe the weeds which invaded the wheat field in our parable are weeds known as Darnell. Now in ancient times, planting Darnell in an enemy's field was a common way of getting revenge. It was so common, in fact, that the Romans enacted a law forbidding the sowing of weeds in another's field. Now I find the properties of Darnell both enlightening and useful in describing the existence of evil along with good. So as I list a few of these properties, substitute in your mind the word evil for Darnell and good when I say wheat. Now, Darnell is classified as a mimic weed. Darnell's life cycle is so close to that of wheat that it cannot thrive without human assistance. Early in the growing season, it is hard to distinguish Darnell from wheat or other cereal grasses. And only the most experienced field hands can tell the difference. Its roots become entangled with the roots of wheat and as it reaches maturity, the grain head of Darnell is lighter. It weighs less than an ear of wheat, and Darnell turns black, whereas wheat remains a light brown color. Now, if ingested, Darnell can cause lightheadedness, nausea, and even death. Now, knowing that, Darnell has been used to enhance intoxicating abilities of certain beverages over the centuries. The parable of Darnell growing among the wheat is an appropriate allegory for reflecting on is what, what is happening in society today. Events of recent months have brought issues of social sin and social injustice to the forefront of our national debate. During his June 3rd general audience, Pope Francis had this to say, Dear brothers and sisters in the United States, I have witnessed with great concern the disturbing social unrest in your nation these past days following the tragic death of Mr. George Floyd. My friends, we cannot tolerate or turn a blind eye to racism and exclusion in any form and yet claim to defend the sacredness of every human life. At the same time, we have to recognize that the violence of recent nights is self-destructive and self-defeating. Now these events have caused many to do some honest soul searching. Remember, Darnell cannot exist without human assistance. Neither can evil. Paragraphs 1868 and 1869 of our catechism tell us Sin is a personal act. Moreover, we have a responsibility for the sins committed by others. When we cooperate in them, by participating directly and voluntarily in sins, by ordering, advising, praising, or approving of them, <clears throat> by not disclosing or not hindering sin when we have an obligation to do so by protecting evildoers. Thus, sin makes men accomplices of one another and causes concupiscence, violence, and injustice to reign among them. Sin gives rise to social situations and institutions that are contrary to divine goodness. Structures of sin are the expression and effect of personal sins. They lead their victims to do evil in their turn, and in an analogous sense, they, <clears throat> they constitute a social sin. Racism and any form of exclusion or oppression of others are social sins. Now when we try to weed these evils out through retaliation, 
boycotts or violence, we not only destroy the intended target, we cause a lot of collateral damage. Worst of all, we promote ourselves from field hands to the landowner. In other words, we make ourselves gods by judging others. The landowner in our parable will wait until the harvest to uproot the weeds from the wheat. God does not rejoice in the destruction of those who sin. He wills that they have a conversion of heart, that they turn away from sin and be reconciled to God. As the field hands have trouble distinguishing Darnell from wheat, often we have trouble distinguishing good from evil. We do not possess the vast wisdom of God. We are called to extend God's grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness to others. Let us stand as we profess our faith. We will pray the shortened creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Seeking justice and peace in God's will, let us lift up these prayers. <clears throat> For the Church, as she may be a sacrament of unity, teaching us to be people of trust, rooted in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that the human family will know the Lord's kindness in all that leads to justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have suffered physically, emotionally, and spiritually during the current pandemic, especially those who have endured delays in medical attention, education, and a return to work, that they may soon return to normal schedules. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all essential workers, that they may be protected from the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishes of St. Mary Oskaloosa and St. Mary Pella, that they guard the sanctity of the Eucharist, always revering it as the source and summit of our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may know the Lord's kindness and everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us growth in your grace and mercy Help us, Lord, to see everyone through your eyes and to come to know your truth and live it sincerely through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood 
of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a word of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Amen. For the distribution of Holy Communion, those who are in the back half of the church will go back to Deacon Lowell near the entryway behind the baptismal font. Those who are seated in the front half of the church will come forward to me uh, to the altar to receive Holy Communion. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.